And we're live with Micah T. Dank, the esoteric author who has exploded on the scene with his series of books. And we're showing them now. The first book, Beneath the Veil, followed by The Sacred Stones, The Secret Weapon. And coming in just a week, Pangea's Pandemic, Into the Rabbit Hole, book four. You can get them all on Amazon. And if you grab this book before it comes out on March 15th, you save two bucks on the Kindle edition. How the heck are you, Micah? I'm good. How you doing, Diamond? We're, we're doing awesome. Now, uh, that you ju we were just having a chat, and you were saying your book sales are brisk. It might even be maybe talking about maybe some movies or a, even a screenplay. Uh, but guys, if you want to follow the progress that Micah has been having, he's got his own public group over on Facebook called Into the Rabbit Hole, and he's, he posts there regularly. So if you want to get in touch with the author, he's there, and you can reach him regularly. So that's a great resource to get to you. Is there any other place, Micah, that uh, the folks listening could, could find you? Or is it just Amazon, your books, and, yeah, the, you can, and the Facebook page? You can get me, you can get me on Twitter. At real Mr. Dank, or you can just look up Micah Dank, and you can get me on uh, on uh, Facebook at Micah Dank, and um, everybody that reaches out to me, follows me, friends me, I give a quick shout out to, I say hello, see how you're doing, you know, I I have a little conversation, I try and do that with every single person still, and uh, my books, yes, they are on Amazon, but if you wanted to get signed copies, you can get them through me directly. Just D DM me, and then we'll uh, we'll work something out with PayPal. Wow, that sounds like you're actually a real human. Is that true? Yeah, it's not a bot. <laughs> it's not well, a Chinese sex bot. Yeah, I'll tell you what. I've been uh, I've had pod I've been podcasting for five years, and I have responded to almost every single email and every single message on my videos. And the I, I average three to 700 messages a day that I have to go through. It's just part of my, uh, it's just part of what I do. It's to keep in touch with the people that are my fans because it's, it's the fans that are driving this information out there. And I'm sure that's, you feel the same way. Oh, absolutely. A hundred percent. If it wasn't for human contact with our fans, we wouldn't really be able to build, uh, a movement like we have now and the esoteric sciences are exploding and you're quite a, a guru when it comes to astro theology and tonight we're not going to talk about your books we did that last podcast yes. we're going to talk about some other cool stuff and specifically we're going to start with uh the book of enoch and now a lot of people that listen to our channel they've heard of the book of enoch uh, and most people, I think, have heard of the Book of Enoch. But what do they really know of the Book of Enoch? And you're, you're pretty much an expert. Now, before we delve into it, <clears throat> let me bring people up to speed here. First, we're going to read you the lame Wikipedia. The Book of Enoch is an ancient Hebrew apocalyptic religious text ascribed by tradition to Enoch, the great-grandfather of Noah, now, Enoch contains unique material on the origins of demons and Nephilim and why some angels have fallen. And according to R.H. Charles, whose 1917 book on the book of Enoch, he claims that the book was written during the second century B.C. It's one of the most important non-canonical apocryphal works and probably had a huge influence on early Christians, particularly the Gnostic beliefs. It's filled with hallucinatory visions of heaven and hell, angels and demons and devils. And Enoch introduced concepts such as the fallen angel and the appearance of the Messiah or Jesus Christ himself. Now, uh, you're an expert on the book of Enoch. What can you tell us, Micah? Micah, you're muted. You're muted, Micah. There you go. You got me now? Yeah, you're back. What can you tell us about Enoch? Um, basically, it's a, <clears throat> it's a text that was removed from the Bible, um, but it's still technically in the Ethiopian Bible, which is very interesting. Um, it's a, a lot of people really are into it in the sense that... Um, it talks about 
things much like the book of revelation does uh it talks of a uh, of, of beings that teach and angels that teach people things and my contention is it was removed from the original bible because as i've gone over in previous podcasts the bible is just an astro theology book and um the interesting thing about the book being an astro theology book is that everything is hidden so i've shown you some hidden codes in it before but the book of enoch is openly talking about astro theology so that's why i think it was removed yeah, so uh, for people listening, what that means is that these ancient texts, and, and that's our contention since the beginning of this channel, it's our contention, and from all my research for decades, that the original science, and I'm talking pre-Diluvian, we're talking before uh, 12,900 year ago, uh, Younger Dryas event, the original Atlantean science, which is what all these books are written about, is astrology and and this is what is used to decipher the great year and very long ages of catastrophe and and now we have the mythology that's written down in the most recent time period which is describing the same astro astrology which is now considered astro theology because they used it as a religion and, and can you can you now break it down for the people listening um how you've kind of unwoven this information because I've never researched the book of Enoch but you've told me that within its covers it, it basically describes the entire zodiac is that true yes it is every book in the new and old testament does the same too just like any of the Gnostic texts that were removed from the bible do too they're all encoded astrology books we can get into that. I just have to cat everyone up to speed with the Zodiac real quick, so I want to blaze through it. But basically, when I tell you what sign represents what, you will... <laughs> when I tell you what sign means what, you'll know what to look for. It'll all make sense to you. All right, so I start with Aquarius, even though the Zodiac actually starts in Aries. So the first sign I talk about is Aquarius, which is represented by the man with the water pitcher. Then Pisces is the sign of the two fish in the water. Then Aries is the ram. And in Aries, you have March 21st, which is the spring equinox. It's a 12-hour day, 12-hour night. It's also the Passover. The Jews celebrate the Passover. Or in astrology, it's the passing over of the sun over the equator and back on its way to its height in the summer solstice. In Christianity, the Passover is changed and called the resurrection of God's son. And it's why the Jews smear the lamb's blood on the door. It's why they have the lamb's bone on the Passover plate. It's why they blow the ram's horn to the sky. It's because the Jews are the people of Aries. Then Taurus is the bull. And when you look at the sky and you see Taurus, you know that you need to put the plow on the bull on earth so that you can plant the seeds so that you can harvest in Virgo and Libra, which I'll get to. Then Gemini is the twins, and it's the story of Castor and Pollux Troy, whose sister was Helen of Troy. It's the story of Achilles. Then Cancer is the crab. It's the sideways moving creature. So just as the so what the sun does is the sun uh, starting on December twenty first, the sun starts rising a degree a day every single day until it hits its height in the summer solstice, which is June twenty first. Once it hits that height, for three days after, it stays at that height. Then on June. 25th it drops a degree and then continues to drop a degree every single day until it hits december 21st where it stays for three days at that lowest point basically the sun is dead it's considered dead because it's at its lowest point it's the middle of winter and um that's why god's son was dead for three days because the sun is dead for three days and jesus represents the sun and then on december 25th it rises a degree again then leo is the lion and uh, the ruling planet of Leo is actually the sun. So when they're talking about the kingdom of heaven on earth, they're talking about the sun in Leo. Then Virgo is the sign of the woman holding the wheat stalk. It's important to remember Virgo and the wheat. So remember when we said you plant in Taurus? So what happens is the, vir the virgins would cultivate the wheat in Virgo in order to make the bread. Then Libra is the justice. It's the scales. It's the balance. It's the sign of the scales. It's known as the just one. And the reason it's justice is because it judges God's son as it passes over the fall equinox and begins its descent into winter, into cold, into death. 
And the Jews always celebrate the new year around this fall equinox. And on top of which, um, because it's the judgment, eight days after Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year, they have something called Yom Kippur, which the Jews are supposed to fast, go into temple and pray all day because God is going to judge them and he's going to put them in the book of life for another year or he's going to not do that. So Libra is also wine season. So Libra is like both judge, law, or wine. Um, because what happens is you plant the grapes in Taurus and then you press them in Libra. Um, so you have the bread in Virgo and you have the wine in Libra. You have the bread and the wine. Those are the symbols of Christianity. Then Scorpio is the scorpion and he's known as the betrayer. Because when a scorpion bites you, it leaves an imprint in your skin that looks like two lips. It's why the mafia has what's called the kiss of death. And it's why Jesus was betrayed by Judas with a kiss, is because he represents Scorpio and Jesus is the sun. So the sun is judged in Libra and it's betrayed in Scorpio. And then finally in Sagittarius, this is where the bow and the arrow shoot the sun and inflict further punishment on the sun. Then Capricorn is the sign of the goat because um, that starts December 25th. It starts the climb of the mountain all the way to its summer solstice all over again. So those are the 12 signs, and I've told you what to look for so in them. Let so me, as I read you the— Can yeah. I jump in? When you read Leo— Yeah, please. You read Leo in the very first third of that uh, explanation. Can you just redo Leo again? And I want to chime in. Yeah, yeah, sure. So Leo is no, Leo is the king. Leo is the, um, it's the king of the jungle. It's the lion. And the ruling planet of Leo is the sun. So when they're talking about the sun being in Jesus in the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of heaven's coming on earth, they're talking about the sun in Leo. Now what struck, so, yeah, what, jump in. what struck me was the Sphinx facing that uh, solstice sun in Leo and Egypt behind it and the Great Pyramids being the personification on earth of heaven on earth. And they were marking it mm -hmm. in Egypt in the Fertile Crescent. Yeah. Go ahead. A hundred percent. The the pyramids in Egypt, the three pyramids, they uh, line up with Orion's belt. Yes. And the interesting thing, too, is the Zodiac. There's two major changes that happened from the Zodiac from Egyptian times because it's been the same across the board except for these changes. The crab used to be known as the scarab, the beetle, mm -hmm. the ancient Egyptian beetle. And the Leo used to physically be the Sphinx. So, yes, it, uh, we, we've talked about this before, where the Sphinx was facing the age of Leo and the water, the water erosion on the back of the Sphinx, talking about the last ice age, the last cataclysm that happened, and it, it surviving it and it being underwater. We've talked about that before. Yeah, it's absolutely geologically confirmed by Robert Schock and myself. Uh, and, and once Schock came out with that information and I looked at it about a decade ago, I was like, of course, that weathering pattern on that limestone it would have taken heavy, treacherous, treacherous rains for tens of decades, hundreds, if not thousands of years. And when you go back into the paleoclimatological record, that hasn't happened since about 12,500 years ago or 11.5, which was the end of the rains. But it means that that Sphinx was built before that because the enclosure and the quarry had already been quarried. The Sphinx was already put together and the water was running into that enclosure. That puts the Sphinx back, in my opinion, comfortably 18,000, 20,000 years old. And, and that would be the dawn mm -hmm. of, of high society that we're talking about. This is a culture that is so far advanced, they may not have a language. They, and, and from my studies in the Yuga, during this golden age, the, at the end of Atlantis and all that, it would have been a telepathic society. You think? Wait, so there would have, yeah, go ahead. That's what I was going to say. I was just going to jump in and say, do you think it was telepathic? Yeah, they have in, this advanced art and uh, extreme, you know, megalithic building structures. Uh, we know of the of the uh, the lion man from a uh, cave carving from 40,000 years ago that shows uh, extreme culture. They knew how to carve it, uh, advanced anthropomorphic things and. I think that there was a telepathic type of communication. They were at a much higher level. Everyone could look into your eyes and when they were speaking through maybe the pineal gland, 
and 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 there was very little need for written language symbolism yes and it was all built into uh, the structures themselves the width the girth the height it all showed uh mathematics they could literally see the math in the what do you make in of, the structure in my opinion what do you make of uh of maybe these megaliths being made with uh, acoustic levitation now I've I've seen as early as three or four decades ago some of the stuff in Florida that was made at that Carl Castle where he has hidden information on acoustical movement, but there is actual scientific breakthroughs that we can prove that if you know the density of a material and you can find the correct acoustics, it will harmonize with the frequency and make it easier to move around. It will actually reduce friction. So if we have some lost technology that would allow us to elevate that to a higher level, there is no reason to suggest we can't get, I mean, because superconductivity has, is get reaching lower and lower levels of electricity. So it, it would simply be a, a, a type of fusion between superconductivity and acoustics that they may have been using in the ancient past. And this would have been earlier than 13,500 years ago. Of course, absolutely. We recently found, you know, um, you've seen tuning forks, obviously, right? Yeah. And they say they're, if you look at the Wikipedia page, they say they're only 150, 200 years old. That's bullshit. You could see tuning forks in Egyptian hieroglyphs. And what happens, too, that's interesting, is you ever see these perfectly circular board holes in limestone? Yeah. What happens is if you put a, the proper, if you put the proper tuning fork on it and you match the resonance of the tuning fork when you hit it to the limestone, then it'll just cut through it like butter. Mm. Yeah, that makes sense. Limestone is not a particularly hard uh, substance. It, it comes in at a hardness on the Mohs scale of 3.5 out of 10, which is very low. A fingernail can scratch 2.5, so it, it's, it's very close to that, like gypsum. So it, even if you had the right acoustics and maybe a very simple saw, you would literally be able to cut through it like butter. Yep. Yeah, that's I believe that. Absolutely. So so we know about the astrology. How how is that in the book of Enoch? Like I didn't I haven't read it. Does, so does it go through it chapter by chapter or is it all hidden like the Bible? Most of it's hidden, some of it's out there. I'm going to start reading it to you, okay? Okay, perfect. Chapter 2, 2 Chapter 2, 2.1. Observe ye everything that takes place in heaven how they do not change their orbits, and the luminaries which are in the heaven, how they all rise and set in order to each in its season, and transgress not against their appointed order. They're literally talking about the zodiac there. Then if you go to chapter 8, 8.2, this openly talks about astrology. Simjaza taught enchantment. Armoros, the resolving of enchantments. Barakil taught astrology, Kokabel, the constellations, Ezekiel, the knowledge of the clouds, Sariel, the course of the moon. Now notice almost all of them end in L. It's a common ending, like Michael, Raphael, Rachel, Michelle, you, you could, a million L names. L was the name of God in the Egyptian times. And the gods were Isis, Ra, and L. And if you add them together, you get the word Israel. Oh my goodness. That's interesting. Now, chapter two and chapter eight are specifically talking about astrology based on what you just read. Now, chapter eight actually has the word astrology in it. How is that even possible? Well, this is my contention as to why it was removed from the Bible because the Bible is a hidden astrology book. And they're openly talking about astrology in this book, so they had to remove it. And for our listeners, what is the purpose of high grading a book that is now called the Word of God? Because, I, and I studied about 20 years ago, the gospel according to Thomas, which is very eye-opening, and mm -hmm. the gospel according to Esther. And those are all left out of the New Testament. And for good measure, because they, they show that Jesus was a real human, probably not a prophet, and everything is made up. 
I believe it. I mean, because if we're going to consider Jesus a prophet, then Muhammad's a prophet, and I'm a prophet, and you're a prophet, because we're doing the same exact work that Jesus was doing. And there are thousands of us all across the planet mm -hmm. that are doing the same work. We're trying to spread the message, the truth. And, and so we're all the same. And so it's, I think that the, the Catholic Church just picked a random guy to make up a story to eliminate us from what is, I, my research is the Godhead, that each and every human is part of a whole, which is God, and that we are all have the potential to be God. I would agree with that. I mean, what does the Gospel of Thomas say? You are, you brought up the Gospel of Thomas. What does the Gospel of Thomas says? It, it says, the kingdom of heaven is inside you. Split a piece of wood and I'm there. Yeah. Um, lift up a stone and you'll find me. Well, and I, I interpret that as Shinrin Yoku, and that's the permaculture science of walking into the wilderness in silence with not, no electronic equipment and learning from nature. And, and I think that's what the book of Thomas was telling us, that the most we can learn the most from uh, observing nature around us, which is the workings of God, which you are. What are you looking at? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it's just there's something on my screen. Oh, okay. I can't see you. Oh, that sucks. I could see me. Oh, I have, I'm sorry. Now you could see me. Yeah. Nope. Give it a second. We're on a lag. All right. So what else? That's fine. I'm going to keep going. Yeah. Talk. Let's go back into the book of Enoch. <clears throat> Chapter 14, 14, 11, it says its ceiling was like the path of the stars and the lightnings. And between them was a fiery cherubim and the heaven was clear as water. This could mean the sign Aquarius or Pisces as they are the two signs that have water within them. Another thing that gives credence to it is 14, 13. And I entered into the house and it was hot as fire and cold as ice. So the sun has entered either Aquarius and Pisces. As those are winter months, the sun is both hot and in the middle of winter, so both are cold as ice. Then 1415, moving right along, says, And I beheld a vision, and lo, there was a second house, greater than the former, and the entire portal stood open before me, and it was built of flames of fire. And in every respect it so excelled in splendor and magnificence, and extent that I cannot describe to you its splendor and its extent. And its floor was fire, and above it were lightnings and the path of the stars, and its ceiling was also flaming fire. And I looked and saw therein a lofty throne. Its appearance was as crystal, and the wheels thereof as the shining sun. So they're talking about the sun in... <laughs> You've frozen up. You've become, our connection now was... Now they were talking oh, okay. about... You're back. <laughs> so before we were also talking about whether it was Aquarius or Pisces. Now we know that they were talking about Aquarius previously because Leo and Aquarius are opposing signs. And the most important signs in astrology are your neighboring signs and your cross sign. Now, you know what I'm getting from this reading here is I, I'm literally visualizing... Um, a tarot deck. It seems like you're describing a tarot deck. Well, that's what the Bible is. That's what, well, that's where the word Torah comes from. That's fascinating. That's where the word Torah comes from. The Bible is three things. It's alchemy, it's astrotheology, and it's the tarot. So it's three things. That's all the Bible is. So can we continue? Yes. We're going to go to 17.2. And they brought me to the place of darkness and to a mountain, the point of whose re summit reached to heaven. They're talking about darkness, which is correlating to winter. So it's one of the winter months. And I saw the place of the luminaries and the treasuries of the stars and of the thunder and in the uttermost depth where there was a fiery bow and arrow and their quiver. The man with the arrow and the quiver is Sagittarius. 
So that they're talking about Sagittarius. First, they said it was darkness, which correlates to winter. So, you know, it's a winter month. And then Sagittarius is the winter when he's read the fiery bow and arrow. Then 17.4. And they took me to the living waters and to the fire of the west. Aquarius and Pisces are on the left side of the zodiac, therefore the west. So the sun is now back to being in the water sign. 18.2. And I saw the cornerstone of the earth. I saw the four winds which bear the earth and the firmament of heaven. The four winds are the cross that the entire zodiac has. So when you look at a zodiac wheel and you draw a perfect cross between it, you're connecting the solstices and the equinox. Okay? So that's the cross. Connecting, um, and I saw how the winds stretched out of the vaults of heaven. I saw the winds of heaven which turn and bring circumference of the sun and all the stars to their setting. They're just talking about astrology. That's all it is. 1813, I saw seven stars like great burning mountains, and to me when I inquired regarding them. The seven stars are actually known as the seven sisters of the Pleiades. Yeah, that's the Pleiades. So they're talking about a star constellation there. <clears throat> Not only that, when mm-hmm. that Iron Cross scenario that crosses this the equinox and the solstice on the astrological wheel corresponds exactly to... Uh, the cosmic wheel, which is the cosmic catastrophe wheel. It takes us 26,000 years to go through the procession of the equinoxes through all the houses of the zodiac, which is a step up from the Mm -hmm. yearly cycle. So we have a yearly cycle, which is the houses of the zodiac in one year. And then we have a 2,600 uh, year cy- a 12,600 year cycle that is the procession of the equinoxes that goes through every house of the equinox for uh, about 1,500 years in each position. So we're talking about each sign. Yeah, each go ahead. Sign of the zodiac. Each sign. Each sign of the zodiac is 2,160 years. Okay. The great year is 25,920. <laughs> You're right. You t- take 2,160 times 12 and then that's what you get it's well, the great year it's simplified because if you do cosmological math and the, and you come from the background i'm from the the procession of the equinoxes itself the wobbling of the earth has slowed down through time so at one time like the each cycle is shorter and shorter so claiming that it's the same it, it may be impossible but it might be right and the actual science might be wrong do you know what i'm saying but regardless, mm-hmm. the great year is determined by the full circumference of that swirl around the universe, which encompasses yes. all the houses of the Zodiac. And, and those houses are also represented in the, uh, the tarot, the tarot cards. And they're also represented in the Book of Enoch, which comes from the Dead Sea Scrolls of all places. And, and people claim that these are sacred yet they will not discuss the connection of Christianity to astrology. In fact, uh, they deny it and they separate it on purpose. Mm-hmm. Yes. You all, the only thing you have to do is look at the Roman Catholic Catechism 2116. There's your answer right there. What is that? Want me to read it to you? Yes. All right, hold on. I'll pull it up because I don't have it memorized. Actually, give me two seconds. Well, if you did have it memorized, Micah, we would be totally freaked out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the Roman Catholic catechisms are basically like amendments to the Bible. It's like, oh, and do this. Oh, and do this. Oh, and do this. I remember them um, as a child but- because I was raised Roman Catholic. I had to go to this CCD, which was a, like a Nazi uh reassignment camp where they I was indoctrinated into the information. The one day I questioned, how could Noah be so old? There's no one that old on earth. My instructor broke a yardstick over my head and my father took me out of the school. But I remember the catechisms. And this is my really? this is my memory. The catechisms were more rules to keep you in compliance. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it was just it, it, it was just a horrible childhood for me. And thankfully, by the time I was 13 and a half and that teacher broke that ruler over my neck, he took me out of that school. And that's just, that's my uh, personal history with the Roman Catholic Church. Evil fucks. I'm going to read, I'm going to read you Catechism 2116. Let's do it. All forms of divination, 
all forms of divination are to be rejected, recourse to Satan or demons, conjuring up the dead or other practices falsely supposed to unveil the future, consulting horoscopes, astrology, palm readings, interpretation of omens and lots, the phenomenon. <laughs> you always freeze up at the good shit. The phenomenon is where we lost you. Are you there? Okay, we lost The phenomena of clairvoyance. Perfect. The phenomena of clairvoyance and recourse to mediums all conceal a desire for power over time, history, and in the last analysis, other human beings, as well as a wish to conciliate hidden powers. They contradict the honor, respect, and loving fear that we owe to God alone. So right there is where they tell you don't listen to astrology. Now, when was that catechism put in effect? Do you know? I, I have no idea. Let me see if I could find that. Do you, uh, what, I have no idea. Do you think I, it's recent or is it back in the 15, 1600s? Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Micah Dank doing research live for your benefit. <sighs> yes. Okay, here we are. We have breaking information on when, oh. when the catechism was put in place, and we are doing science right before your very no. lives. 1992. Oh, my God. That is, that, that is mind-blowing. Sign of the times. <clears throat> and guess what else will happen in 1992, Micah? Uh, was that the Bill Clinton blowjob? It could have been, but that was when the internet exploded. And, and the powers that be knew that information was going to be shared worldwide amongst every individual. And they would start talking about astrotheology in books like the Book of Enoch, the Dead Sea Scrolls it's themselves, and, and many other gospels that were left out of the Bible. Now, do you, do you see, can you, do you agree with me that the church is evil? Oh, 100%. My first two books are about that. Okay, uh, thank you. Wow, I thought you were going to be my, like my last interview and we were going to have to ad agree to disagree. <laughs> No, no, no. The, the Jesuits are at the top, and then they basically control the church now. Okay, so this is a great segue to the Illuminati. What the hell is yes. going on? I, I still can't see you. That's all right. It's because we have a really bad connection, and I'm, I can't even move my picture around now. But what I'm showing is a picture of the Pope with the heavy metal double finger up and some Chinese Pope-looking guy. And, and now I'm going to show a picture of Al Sharpton and Puffy. Yes, right. Puffy doing the triangles. And I'm going to show a picture of the OK symbol. You're not up here yet. And then I have the heavy metal Satan fingers, uh, a field guide by John Beam. And it shows you all the different heavy metal Satan fingers that you can potentially do. And I've just done them all for the public. And I'm about to bring you back up. <clears throat> OK, so you're back. Uh, I just showed them all the... Illuminati hand signals that the supposed elites are doing. You could, can you show us some of the Illuminati hand signals that you know? This is one. And they used to say, remember in the news, this was supposed to be white power when they tried to do that. Yeah. When they tried to say that. Well, this is also the six, six, six. Yes. Okay. And you see it sometimes like this. But what this is, what it truly, what it goes back to, is if you take this and you invert it like this, it's the lotus position in meditation. It's the Buddhist Om. That's oh. all it is. All I did was just rotate it. All I did was just rotate it. Oh. This is how you sit in the lotus position. So that's all that one is. Um, covering the eye like this. Right when when you see the the celebrities do this, that just goes back to Horus, because if you've ever seen the Eye of Horus, the picture of the Eye of Horus, what happens is if you take a sagittal cut of the human brain, you slice it down like this, and then you open it up like this. In the middle of it, you'll see the pineal gland. 
And then you'll see a ridge on it, like an eyebrow. That's the corpus callosum. The ancients knew about the pineal gland and its um, its secrets, I should say. The yeah. ancient Egyptians knew about it. And that's all this is. They take this to mean now the, <coughs> the all-seeing eye on the dollar bill, the pyramid, the new world order. That's what they corrupted it to say. But this this just goes back to be the pineal gland, enlightening. Yeah, and In now- the book of Genesis, Genesis 30. Well, the Anunnaki, all the uh, original Anunnaki type, the Akkadian reliefs, the boss reliefs, have all the Akkadians with the little handbags, and they're, they're holding a pine cone, which is literally what the pineal gland looks like. They're holding the pineal gland and holding the handbag, like they had the key to the Godhead. That's what I interpret that. Well, the Pope. The Akkadian with the, with the skirts the on, holding the pine cone. And the Roman Catholics mm-hmm. now have the pine cone on the shaft as they walk down and they burn the incense down the, and they ask you to give money. He's holding the pineal gland and, 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 and scenting you all with the frankincense and myrrh, and you're passing that basket to money to him. It's absolutely bizarre. And they also is. have... Um... <laughs> In the in the uh, in the Vatican, you also have what's known as the ch- the the court of the pine cone, where you have a giant pine cone there, and you have two phoenixes that are sitting on either side of it. Remember the phoenix? It's a story about the creature that the the flaming creature, like Jesus the sun, and then it basically dies and it's reborn. That's the yeah. story of Jesus. It flew up to the sun and it's uh, the the feathers burned and it fell back down to earth and it died, didn't it? Uh, the Phoenix, I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, so what's the purpose and, and are these really signals we're seeing from all these celebrities or is it just a okay and stuff like that? Or is there a purpose? The same club, but the celebrities don't know what they're doing. They don't know the history of this. The next few that I'm going to go over, like the first two that I went over are absolutely they come from a positive place. They've just been corrupted. Hmm. This one, you, you familiar with this one? Yeah, well, we showed that. And, and uh, Puffy, P. Diddy, and Al Sharpton are doing it. Yeah. And that's the all-seeing eye, I guess. So this, but you've, you've seen this before, right? Yeah. Have you seen this before? Yes. The, uh, Live Long and Prosper? Yes. When you do this, like when you do this like this, Okay, this is known as the benediction. It was an ancient Jewish Kohanim priest blessing on the congregation that would basically just uh, purify them. That's what this one is. And then it was corrupted into just this. But this goes back to this. This is what this is the origin of it. It was a blessing. So when Jay-Z goes like this is the origin of it is he's putting a blessing on everybody. Yeah, because I when I researched the Illuminati hand hand signs, what I uh, uncovered was that the majority of the hand signs go back to the Roman Catholic Church. The Holy Trinity is the three fingers up. The split finger with the triangle, like you showed, was a blessing. And these are all things that bishops and priests were doing in church. Uh, in the, at the turn of the century that uh, a lot of the public knew about. So they would give these hand signals in their local communities like, as a blessing. Mm-hmm. Right. And everybody knows this one. Have you showed this one? Yeah, that's the heavy metal death fingers that is called the call of Satan. Right. It's, but it's not. It's actually something that goes back to, um, to the Buddhists called the Apana Mudra which is a purification symbol. It purifies the individual physically from toxins and sheds negative energies that, that you might be holding. That's what this is. This is a blessing on someone. You see the little old Italian ladies that go like this. They're not, they're not doing the devil horns. It has nothing to do with the devil. No, and then, There's nothing to do with the devil. When you're in Hawaii, that's mahala. That's like live long and prosper. That's how they heal you with that little, they shake the hands and they make that symbol. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, what, You're familiar with the upside down cross? No, what is? Yeah, well, I know about it. That means Satan. Right, it's not Satan, no. It's the cross of St. Peter. St. Peter was crucified upside down because he said he wasn't worthy of being crucified in the same way as Jesus was. So it was out of love that he did that. It was out of respect. It has nothing to do with Satanism. 
And in fact, Satanism has nothing to do with Satanism. No, in fact, Satanism is now all over Facebook and they're claiming that it's the church of love and the church of Christianity is the evil war of God. Can you speak to that? Well, I'm, I'm convinced that the, um, I mean, I, I can kind of sort of see that to be honest with you, yeah. because, um, you have to understand is that the, the church of Satan doesn't worship a Satan. Satan doesn't exist. <laughs> Satan actually in Hebrew, Hashatan literally just means adversary. So two UFC fighters are Satans. That's what they are. It's just an adversary. That's all it means. There was no red guy that, that, that talked to God, this and that. Um, I believe the Antichrist is literal Christianity instead of reading it like astrology is. To be honest with you, I think that's what the Antichrist is. It's taking the book literally. So the Antichrist is the Roman Catholic Church using the Bible as a bastardization of something godly. Exactly. Yeah, I'm with you on that. And a lot of people won't be able to swallow that pill, Micah. We've just dipped deep into the rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. It's true, though. The more you look at it, the more that you know. Yeah, and that's why we do these podcasts. Sure, what, you, what you have to understand. Yeah. What do we have to understand? What you have to understand is, is that what you think is up is actually down and vice versa. Because it turns out, have you seen this symbol before? Have you seen Jesus with the two fingers up or, or Baphomet, Satan, Lucifer with the two fingers up like this? Yes. This is an ancient comedic peace sign. This is an ancient Egyptian peace sign. That's why they're doing it. They're peaceful. When you see it, sometimes it's like this. Sometimes it's like this. This that everybody uses as a, as a peace sign is actually this is this is togetherness. These two are together. This is close. This is peace. This is a this part. is separation. <laughs> this is an ancient. This is a part. This is an ancient British war sign. That's what this is. This is the peace sign. So what's up is really down. Yeah, and that's what you realize. Well, we've been sharing this with our uh, our fans for four or five years now, and and they're starting to believe that the entire mission of the NSA and NASA and our governments is disinformation, and they've done a great job. And religions have a lot to do with it. I don't want to sell out religions, but I do because we've basically thrown them under the bus here. And, and the true nature of humanity is to get to the root of truth. And we are truth seekers. <clears throat> so it's not me to say which religion is right, but to sweep them all under the rug and say they're all probably not correct. Now, they do provide, in my right. opinion, an amazing resource. They build community. Um, they help to instill moral values. But... I think that religion has... You could do that without religion. I know, I know, I know. So what are your solutions? Uh, because clearly we can't convince 8 billion people to do something else. Well, that's what I'm trying to do with my book series and everything. Yeah? So what would you hope for a future as we close up tonight? <laughs> do, do we, are we trying to get people to red pill themselves? to walk out of those facilities, to stop making billionaires out of, out of these mega church charlatans? Absolutely. You have to understand is that the Bible is just an astrology book. That's all it is. I've gone over some of it with, um, I've gone over some of it today in the book of Enoch. I've done, uh, other presentations with you before, but that's all it is. And the ancients, before 325, when Constantine unified Christianity as a literal religion, before then, Christians were known as Heliognostics, which is Heliognosis, which is he sun worship. That's what that means. They were sun worshippers because they knew. And the symbolism is still there. But, I mean... There's no salvation in religions. There's not. It's supposed to keep you at the lowest form of spirituality. That's its purpose. And you know what? I, I, I believe you wholeheartedly because the moment I had salvation was when I saw through the veil of religion and I started to delve into my own 
uh, Godhead. I, I created my own source of godliness from inside that came from the inside out. It healed all my wounds. I wake up as a spiritual being every day, happy to uh, be alive and to attack whatever it is coming. I can accept anything at face value. I am no longer particularly judgmental in my daily life. On my podcast, I have to be because that's what gets people to watch. But I have a quality of life that is exponentially higher than any time in my life because I have reached this level of awareness. And I think that's what you and I are trying to instill in everyone that's listening tonight. Yeah, I mean, I would just say you can YouTube my other presentations. Just look me up on YouTube. You can see I go into this with presentations. I have PowerPoints. I have things. It's, it's, it's blatantly obvious when you know. And I went over the 12 signs today, and that's the kind of stuff you look for. If I were to see a passage about wheat or grain or something of that matter, I know they're talking about Virgo. It's the lady with the wheat stalk. If they're talking about wine or they're talking about someone being judged, that's a passage. They're talking about Libra. I understand how to read the Zodiac, and I'm trying to teach people how to do that too. And if, if they can understand your uh, symbology, what will that, how will that benefit their life? You wouldn't have to be worried about <laughs> about not living up to an impossible standard in the Bi in the Bible. Yeah, I mean it's an impossible standard to live up to. You wouldn't have to do that. You would know that passages that talk about like homosexuality being evil. That's not God ordained. It's not God written. It was written by a man. It had nothing to do with God. You would know that this was written by men to encode information. That's what this was. Absolutely mind-blowing, uh, the presentation tonight. Micah T. Dank, he's the author of an entire series of books. The fourth book is coming out in a week. Uh, we're, we're showing you them all here. We've got uh, Beneath the Veil, The Sacred Stones, The Secret Weapon, and then the fourth book coming out in a week, Pangea's Pandemic. <clears throat> you can find Micah on his uh, YouTube channel. Uh, group into the rabbit hole you can also find him on youtube under his own name micah t dank find him on twitter at micah t dank uh we talked about the book of enoch tonight always a pleasure to have you on any uh final words for the people watching because this was an awesome show thanks man i just i i think that some people are going to think i'm completely bananas or batshit crazy I'm not. This actually does make sense if you if you look at it. Look at other presentations I've done. It'll start to make sense to you, I promise. Well, and me nodding my head and corroborating almost everything you said from my experience speaks volumes to the viewers. Um, we appreciate you as a human. We appreciate you as a novelist. We appreciate you as a member of the community, Micah. Let's do this soon. We have so many topics to talk about. I can't wait to pick your brain. Yes. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on again. Be safe. And that's boom. Nanu, yep. Nanu, nanu.